So if you've been on the internet for a while, you probably remember that whole stupid pirates versus ninja debate. Entire websites were devoted to idiotic opinions on which group of historical warriors were bigger badasses. So who would win in a fight between pirates and ninja? Oh my god, who the hell cares? Yep, that's not the question I'm going to answer today. Actually, it kind of is, but not in the way you think. Because today, I'm going to shed some light on those shadowy warriors of Japan's dark and murky past by asking, and hopefully answering, did ninja really exist? <laughs> So, to put it bluntly, did ninja exist? Well, as usual, the answer is yes and no. If by ninja, you mean professional soldiers who specialized in espionage, assassination, and covert operations, then yes, ninja existed in the same way that the special forces and the CIA exist today. But if by ninja, you mean entire clans or social classes of semi-mystical shadow warriors dressed all in black, using a variety of secret fighting skills and fantastical weapons that were borderline supernatural, or at least centuries ahead of their time, who only pass their secret skills among members of their own clans, and who continue to exist in remote mountain enclaves to this day, then no. So, to understand the ninja, you have to understand certain things about Japanese history. And condensing over 2,000 years of history into just a few short minutes is borderline impossible. And yes, before you point it out, it leads to a lot of sloppy generalizations. But I'm gonna do my best. To put it briefly, Japan has been ruled by emperors since the beginning of its history. Japan also had a rigid caste system. And although the definition and class distinctions would change over time, Professional soldiers generally made up their own class, which eventually came to be called the samurai. Samurai roughly translating to servant. So in other words, anyone who was born into one of those designated samurai families was expected to serve the emperor, usually as a soldier. However, peasants and commoners were still routinely drafted into the armies of various warlords to serve as infantry, without ever becoming samurai. In the 12th century, there was a military coup that replaced the emperor as the de facto ruler, relegating him to a figurehead with cultural and religious significance, but no real power. The new ruler of Japan was called the Shogun, and he was basically a military warlord who commanded the loyalty of the samurai, or in other words, the professional army officers. There's nothing unique about this. It's a scenario that's happened many times in all of the world's major civilizations. So over the centuries, Forces loyal to the imperial family would occasionally overthrow the shogun and reinstall the emperor, only for a later emperor to be overthrown and replaced with another shogun. But through it all, the samurai class continued to dominate affairs throughout the country, and eventually they evolved from simply the warrior class to essentially the entire nobility. Meanwhile, commoners were still doing most of the actual fighting, but with none of the glory. By the 17th century in particular, it would be very incorrect to say that all samurai were soldiers, or that all soldiers were samurai. The samurai class still served as military officers, but also as administrators, bureaucrats, clerks, etc. They pretty much ran every aspect of the government. Meanwhile, like any other army, the Japanese army still needed infantry, grunts, and arrow fodder, and the samurai officers were only too happy to continue drafting the peasants that lived on their lands. One of the main distinctions was simply that the sword, or more specifically the katana, was reserved solely for actual samurai. Commoners fought with whatever weapons they had, mostly spears, but also farm tools, which gives us many of the traditional martial arts weapons we still know today. Now, all of this ties into a concept that we need to address, the samurai code of honor. And yes, this does have to do with the ninja. Just be patient, all right? Samurai supposedly lived by this strict code of morals and ethics, called Bushido, that if violated, meant that they had to commit ritual suicide to restore their honor in death. Uh, 
Yes. So what constituted a violation of samurai honor? Well, the list, among other things, supposedly included things like dishonesty, sneakiness, killing an enemy through underhanded means, basically fighting in any way other than a direct face-to-face -face battle. And that is where the modern myth of the ninja came in. Supposedly, because of the strict nature of the samurai code, noble samurai were forced to hire the services of skilled spies and assassins to do the dirty work that they were forbidden to do, and thus they turned to the ninja. According to legend, the ninja were any of several clans of warriors living in the remote Koga and Iga mountain ranges, and were the descendants of either disgraced nobility or Chinese warrior monks who had secretly visited Japan centuries before and continued to practice their stealthy arts in secret. The problem is, it's all There isn't a single shred of evidence that any of this is true, and most of it is so patently absurd that people should have known better in the first place. First of all, while the samurai did have some pretty strict rules they had to adhere to, it was nowhere near as standardized and codified as people would have you believe. In fact, the term Bushido, which literally means the way of the warrior, wasn't even used until the 1890s, long after the end of the samurai era, and it was coined by an amateur philosopher and historian who admitted to making it up. Second, the image of the ninja in his black suit and face mask was first depicted in a print from the early 1800s. Again, after the end of the samurai era, but it was based on the black suits that stagehands wore in traditional Japanese theater productions, not martial arts. This is a practice that continues today, I might add. And as has been pointed out by many experts before me, the black suit and mask that we normally associate with the ninja was pretty impractical. Not only was it conspicuous as hell during the day, it wasn't all that great for nighttime either. An effective spy doesn't try to be invisible, they just try to blend in and look like they belong. So if you wanted to know what a 17th century Japanese spy looked like, the answer is probably just like everybody else. Otherwise, what was the point? Weapons catalogs, and even martial arts schools proudly display authentic ninja weapons, which always includes a katana-like sword with a straight blade, shuriken, hand claws, caltrops, etc. Now, some of these things may have actually been used, but there was no standardized set of equipment, or even really any particular tradition of such things. That straight-bladed sword in particular is questionable, because for centuries, the sword was specifically reserved for the samurai class. Now it's entirely possible that blacksmiths throughout Japan may have manufactured cheap swords for anyone who wanted one, and straight blades are easier to craft than curved ones, so mercenaries and robbers probably did have black market straight bladed swords. However, there is no evidence in the historical record for any of this, and if these things did exist, they did not exist strictly as a ninja weapon. They'd be the equivalent of a cheap handgun or even a shiv. Okay, so after all of that, what, then, was a ninja? Well, to make myself clear, there is no sharp divide between the concept of a ninja and the concept of a samurai. As I said before, every army in history has needed spies, so there's no reason why espionage would ever have been considered dishonorable, especially if it meant winning a war. So there's no reason why samurai couldn't have gone undercover behind enemy lines to glean information. And besides, the samurai only made up a small portion of the actual army, and there was no shortage of expendable peasant soldiers that could be trained and sent undercover, and maybe some who even came to specialize in these sort of skills. Simply put, there was no need to go all the way to some isolated mountain village to find legendary warriors with supernatural skills. And assassination is a similar matter. Feudal Japan had a very complex political system, and throughout history, complex political systems have always found a use for assassins. Slipping poison to a political rival, or stabbing them in the back, or in the dark, may have been considered cowardly, and some few 
proud, arrogant samurai may have felt that such tasks were beneath them, but the samurai were far from a homogeneous lot, and I'm sure there were no shortage of them who'd be willing to do such a thing for a price, or simply because they were ordered to. Think about it. If you put a knife in your own belly just because you were ordered to, would you really draw the line at sticking a knife in an enemy's back? And if not an actual samurai, then any veteran soldier in need of a quick buck would probably be willing and able to do the job just fine. And if you couldn't even find one of them, then I'm sure literally anyone else would do. Everyone has a price, and you don't need a damned superhero in black pajamas. So if the legendary ninja were really just regular soldiers, samurai or otherwise, then how and why did this whole myth get started? Well, ask yourself why James Bond and Batman continue to be super popular. The ninja were to Japanese literature what superheroes are to American pop culture. A damn good story. A ninja story was equal parts paranormal ghost story and high-tech spy thriller. Adding a ninja to a theatrical performance signaled to the audience that shady and exciting stuff was about to happen. But even still, the ninja weren't very commonly used in Japanese culture until the 1960s and 70s when Japanese cinema started to really flourish. The ninja were naturals for movies, especially in the distinctive black clothing that had become synonymous with literary and artistic depictions of ninja. They looked striking and dangerous and cool, and they still do. Now we tend to think of the Asian martial arts as being very ancient, but the fact is, even though many of these arts have pretty ancient roots, the arts as we know them today are actually very modern. Most of the martial arts popularly practiced today were invented in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Yeah, they're barely a hundred years old. And while some Westerners had visited Japan during that time, it wasn't really until World War II that large numbers of Americans began to experience Japanese culture, including martial arts. And many of them brought that newfound knowledge back to the United States and began to teach, thus increasing the popularity of martial arts training. By the 1970s and 80s, more and more Americans were not only studying Japanese martial arts, they were watching Japanese movies, including ninja movies and were also starting to travel to Japan in search of authentic instructors. And if you were a martial arts instructor in Japan at a time when droves of uneducated and ignorant foreigners were descending on your country, wads of cash in their hands, asking you if you taught ninjutsu, well, why wouldn't you say yes? I mean, technically, if you were teaching any martial art in Japan, then there was a good chance that some ninja, and by now you should know that when I say ninja, I'm referring to any sort of spy, assassin, or peasant soldier, at some point in the past, had practiced similar fighting skills. So why not put on a black uniform and throw in some rudimentary wall climbing lessons while you're at it? And it's not like what they were teaching was fake or ineffective, it just had nothing to do with this. Now, I'm not accusing anyone of overt lying. But at the same time, almost all of the so-called ninjutsu schools that have proliferated over the last 30 years have been proven to be total frauds. And the few that do have some actual lineage to a legitimate historical martial art have since decided to distance themselves from any mention of ninja or ninjutsu. And that should pretty much tell you everything you need to know about whether ninja really existed or not. Well, if this video suddenly gets taken down and I disappear without a trace, then you'll know I was wrong and the ninja got me because I said too much. So before that happens, you should probably like, share, and subscribe before it's too late. Wait, what the hell just happened? including martial arts.